Step 2. Basic ingredients. So there are two basic ingredients to our entanglement-based QKD protocol. The first ingredient is the procedure of establishing a secret key. So we said that for that purpose we will use an entangled state of two qubits. So let's consider the case where Alice and Bob are sharing the following Bell pair. The state is described by this uh, state vector, Psi plus, which is an equal superposition of uh, basis state 0, 1 and 1, 0. So now if we measure these qubits in, some, in, in the same basis, the outcomes will be correlated or anticorrelated depending in which basis they are measured. This way, and also the probability of these outcomes is uniformly random. So let's see an example to demonstrate how it works. Let's say that we, as we said, we start in this uh, uh, Bell state Psi plus. And both Alice and Bob measure in the X basis. Then we can compute the probabilities of all four possible outcomes. So the probability that both Alice and Bob obtain a correlated result of plus plus is given by a half. The probability that they uh, get an outcome minus minus is also a half. And the other two probabilities therefore have to be zero. So in this way, when Alice measures pl uh, state pl plus, Bob always measures state plus. When Alice measures state minus, Bob always measures state minus. So in terms of their classical bits that they uh, get as the uh, outcomes of their measurements, they always get either 0, 0 with probability a half or 1, 1 with the same probability of 50%. So in this way, they can establish a secret random correlated key. What if they measure in the Z basis? Well, the scenario is very similar, although now the uh, results are anti-correlated. So the probability that they get, both of them get state 0, 0 is 0. Same for the probability of obtaining the state 1, 1, which is 0. And with equal probability, they either get the state 0, 1 or 1, 0. So always when Alice measures 0, and she's measuring in the Z basis, and Bob also measures in the Z basis, she knows that he always gets the state 1. And vice versa, if she measures the state 1, Bob will always measure state 0. So in this case, the, the classical key that they get is anticorrelated as well, just like the quantum results. So they, Alice either has 0 and Bob has 1, with probability 50%, or it's vice versa. Alice has 1 and Bob has 0. Well, but they know that they are both measuring the Z basis, so all that Bob needs to do is flip his bit and they again establish a correlated secret random key which they can use to encrypt their data. The second ingredient now is to verify that they have an entangled state. Why do they need to do that? Well, the first reason is we have just seen that entangled states can be used to um, generate a correlated random key. But also there is a very important second step, which was not present in the BB84 protocol. And that is that entanglement can be used uh, for security as well. Namely, maximally entangled states are guaranteed to be secure due to something known as monogamy of entanglement. So what is monogamy of entanglement? Monogamy of entanglement is a very fundamental property of quantum states and it constrains how correlated uh, um, multiple qubits can be. In particular, if Alice and Bob share a maximally entangled state, then we are guaranteed that uh, they cannot share any correlations with a third party, such as Eve. So in terms of security, this is very important, because if they can demonstrate and verify that they have a maximally entangled state, they are automatically demonstrating that whatever key they establish is secure, and Eve does not have any information about their secret key. In general, there is a, a trade-off. So if Alice and Bob share some entanglement, they will share some correlations with Eve. So the stronger the entanglement that they share, the less correlated they are with Eve. 
until we went to the point where they are maximally entangled and therefore they share no correlations with Eve. So, stronger entanglement between Alice and Bob it implies more secure key between Alice and Bob. So how do we actually verify that Alice and Bob are sharing a maximally entangled key? We use something known as a CHSH inequality. Let's start by considering four classical random variables, and we're going to denote them as a, a bar, b, and b bar. And they all can have values plus one or minus one. And now let's say that we form the next function with these random variables. We take b and b bar and we add them together and multiply by the value of a. We also take b and b bar and take the difference between them and multiply by a bar and then we sum the two together. You can easily convince yourself that for any combination of plus, or plus one or minus one, the maximum value that you can get for this expression is plus two, and the minimum value that you can get is minus two. Now imagine that you are constantly generating these uh, random variables, a, a bar, and you, you are interested on average. What expression do you get here? Well, that will be constraint. So here, these angular brackets denote the average value of this following expression, and you, we are adding it with the average value of this expression. And we take the absolute value of the whole sum. And that is constrained to be less or equal to 2. As we said above here, the maximum they can get is 2. The minimum they can get is minus 2. So those are the two extremes. And the expectation value will be somewhere in between, depending on the details of the probability distributions for these random classical variables. So we can just expand these expectation values over here, and what we get is the following expression, which we are going to denote as by this uh, S and refer to it as CHSH expression. And that, as we said, has to be less or equal to 2. And this inequality is known as the CHSH inequality. So any classical random variable, A, A, A bar, B, B bar, they have to satisfy this constraint. Okay, this is the classical case. What happens in the quantum case? Well, in the quantum case, we can consider A, A, uh, A bar, B, B bar to be the uh, measurement outcomes of a, um, in a certain basis on some state psi. So just to remind you, the expectation value of an observable where uh, Alice measures A and Bob measures B is given by this expression. Take the tensor product of the uh, observables A and B, and then we compute uh, uh, the following expectation value with respect to the state psi. And amazingly, for some quantum states, we can actually violate the CHSH inequality. By violating, we mean that over here, we can obtain a value that's larger than 2. So then what it means is we can use this expression to detect entanglement. In particular, in an experiment, when we measure and compute these various uh, expectation values, and we, then we sum them up in this manner, and we obtain a CHSH expression which is less than 2, then we can say maybe the states are classically correlated. But if we measure a CHSH expression which is larger than 2, then we can in fact say that definitely these states are entangled. And in quantum mechanics, the CHSH expression can go all the way up to a value of 2 times the square root of 2. And this happens for maximally mixed states, as we will see in the next slide. So let's consider a particular example. Let's say we take one of the Bell pairs, psi plus, and we know that it's maximally uh, entangled state. And for the measurement settings, we consider the following. A is uh, the Pauli Z observable, A bar is the X observable. And B and B bar are given by these combinations of Z and X. So these are just rotated uh, measurement bases. 
Then we can just go through the algebra of computing the expectation values, and what we get is in fact that for a maximally entangled state, we obtain this CHSH expression of 2 root 2. So, this gives us a way of verifying entangled states, and in particular verifying maximally entangled states, which is very important for our entanglement-based QKD protocol. So, if we can demonstrate that we violate the CHSH inequality maximally, in other words, the CHSH expression is 2 root 2, then we can certify that, in fact, the state that Alice and Bob share is maximally entangled state. That uh, then allows us to say that they are not correlated with Eve due to monogamy of entanglement, and therefore we can guarantee the security of their secret random key.